and not to get partisan on this, but this is not a position you hear a lot of Republicans take. What mm -hmm. led you personally um, to it appears to be anti-death penalty? Because forgive me if you did talk about this during the campaign, but I don't remember hearing about it then. I, I think I was asked on a, a Calvin University interview on this, but um, it, it frankly wasn't a topic that came up much. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm strongly and, and proudly pro-life, and I think that faith should guide you know, that sense of moral compass and, and approach to decisions. And to be honest, it's always been a struggle for me to reconcile that belief with the federal government having the ability to kill its own citizens. Uh, and so this is something where I think the time is right. Uh, we just saw last week um, a, a gentleman who had been executed in Arkansas in 2017 uh, that a new DNA match or a DNA reevaluation of the murder weapon came back with a different um, individual's DNA on it. And, and I, I think we are, as a society, I think it's time that we reevaluate some of these practices, especially the fact that, A, it has not been shown to have any deterrent capability. So it does not reduce crime or provide a deterrence against those who are committing it. And B, it costs more. I mean, this is a waste of taxpayer dollars and, and it, it may feel right, right? I mean, you hear some of these stories of just absolutely atrocious, abominable, evil behavior. And, and there, there's that feeling of, of revenge, of, of wanting uh, to have justice be served. Uh, but at the end of the day, I want that individual to live with that guilt. I want them to face the consequences. I don't want the government letting them off the hook. You, you uh, prefaced all of this by saying this is mostly a, a, a faith decision, being pro-life. You said, and, and a lot of people do, do bring up those questions. If you're pro-life at birth, how are you not pro-life at death? And the opposite as well. Um, um, what Democrats say, you know, if you're anti-death uh, penalty, I can be pro-abortion. So we've seen this used politically. But you mentioned this is a faith decision. Is this something that you've held for quite a while, or did you ever evolve on this issue? Well, let me preface it by saying I, I certainly think, I do not think that being pro-life and being anti-death penalty, uh, I don't think those have to go together. And I think plenty of people can be pro-life and still support the death penalty. Um, I would say in my own experience, some of the moral challenges I had when I was in Iraq, especially involved in targeting missions, where we were making decisions on you know, those that were, um, you know, we were frankly making the decision of, of who was going to be killed. And, and now this was a situation where those were not individuals that we could get custody of, that we couldn't prosecute, we could not take prisoner, and we were um, intervening in, in frankly, in self-defense in the face of imminent hostile actions. Uh, but that definitely led me to grapple with the moral weight of having to make decisions about taking lives. And, and frankly, um, as we, as, as I became not just engaged with that on the moral front, but also weighing what is the appropriate role for government um, and, and engaged on that essence of political philosophy. Uh, I'll be honest, I do not trust the government to be flawless. Uh, I do not think the federal government is perfect in its decision-making. And the chance of the federal government killing somebody who's innocent, uh, I think is very real. And, and we've seen examples of that historically, uh, or you know, the I think it's, um, over the past 40 years, 166 individuals have been exonerated from death row. Uh, I think it's really hard personally for me to square both granting the government authority to kill its own citizens in its custody and in its care, and also what that risk is of the federal government killing an innocent person. Okay, this is HR 262. I I'm reading just in the notes that your staff sent me. Um, are you authoring this personally or are you signing on to someone else's bill? And either way, is there bipartisan support yet? Any Republicans other than yourself supporting this, do you know? Yeah, this is a bill that had been reintroduced in the past. Um, and then I had joined on as lead you know, bipartisan co-sponsor. Um, to be honest, we have a, a lot on our plate right now. So we're, we're waiting to see what the timing may be like as we're gaining additional support. Um, I, I am I'm hopeful and optimistic um, on its chances of, of passage. And, and again, um, I think if you, if you think the government is perfect in all of its actions and you think the government cannot make a mistake, um, then that's one way to go about it, but that's not where I come down. 
I think it would be obvious that the heavy lifting on something like this would have to be done in the Republican caucus in the Senate, getting 60 votes for cloture. Obviously, there I, and you know better than I, but I would assume you would have enough Democrats to pass this easily enough in the House. Um, do you know if there's any Republican Senate support for this at all? How far, I mean, I don't know how far down the line you are. I said this is a bill that's been brought up again. Have you looked that far ahead yet? Yeah, we, we haven't yet gotten into the bicameral discussions. Um, I don't, the, the previous iteration, I don't believe was brought up in the Senate. So we don't necessarily have a voting record in recent times on that front. Uh, I think we have seen across the board a, a skepticism at the federal government's um, role. Right? I, I come at, from a conservative standpoint, believing in limited government, very much believing in individual liberty uh, and wanting to have the government have as unobtrusive a role as possible. I think we've seen a greater belief and emphasis in that, that uh, even while the Democrats are pushing big government in a lot of circles, uh, an acknowledgement that there are limitations there. And again, I, I come back to this fundamental belief that I don't trust the government to get it right. I don't wanna see the federal government killing its own citizens, especially the risk of killing an innocent individual. And there's been no deterrent effect. It has not been proven to reduce crime. And it costs the taxpayers a whole heck of a lot more hard-earned taxpayer dollars to kill somebody than to let them live with the consequences of their action in life in prison without parole. Okay, I think we got about three minutes left. I got two questions I want to burn through on this. Uh, I, I forget the name of the member of the Republican House, but he reached out to, to President Biden at the joint session of Congress and mentioned something he wanted to talk about, I think. In the sure, uh, yes. Sheriff Troy Nels, he's a yeah. freshman member, yes. Yeah, about uh, 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 prison reform. And mm -hmm. the president's staff reached out to him the next day. I, I don't know where President Biden is on this. I would imagine he's against the death penalty. Just And forgive me, that's that's uh, boilerplate, just him being a Democrat. Is this something anyone involved in this bill has reached out to the president's office about at all? I, I don't I don't have that information right now. I'm, I'm not sure if the, some of the Democratic co-sponsors may have done so. Uh, obviously, President Biden, from when he was senator, has undergone quite the evolution on crime. Uh, definitely one of the authors and proponents of some of the large Clinton era crime bills that led to mass incarceration. Uh, but I, I think we've also seen, and you saw this um, under President Trump's watch and his belief in, in, in criminal justice reform, the passage of the First Step Act and other you know, sentencing reform issues, uh, that this is really an issue that transcends party lines. And I think there's a smart way to go about it. And I think Michigan on our criminal justice reform initiatives that really unites the left and the right has done it intelligently. New York has done it atrociously, uh, where you just encourage repeat offenders and get in the way of justice, rather than treating our justice system, uh, especially when it comes to the reform efforts, as something that should be aimed towards rehabilitation and reentry, rather than punitive and creating career criminals. Okay, last question, I'll let you go. And just for a matter of, of process, so I know, in order to get a vote on this, uh, I would imagine it has to go through a committee first, but then do you do you need to get Speaker Pelosi on board to allow a vote on this? Is that how it works? Well, that's, that's the challenge of the House is nothing gets put on the floor um, with the exception of discharge petitions, but that's a higher threshold. Nothing gets put on the floor without the, the Speaker scheduling it. 